A team at Google set out to make a game of Pictionary more interesting and ended up with the world's largest doodling dataset and a powerful machine learning model to boot. How did they do it? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, we're gonna check out the largest data set of hand-drawn doodles and see what we can do with it. Quick Draw was a game that was initially featured at Google I.O. in 2016 as a game where one player would be prompted to draw a picture of an object, and the other player would need to guess what it was, just your standard Pictionary game. In 2017, the team took that idea a step further and used the sketch RNN model from the Magenta team at Google Research to try to predict what the player was drawing in real time instead of requiring a second player. The game is now available online and has collected millions of hand-drawn doodles. Let's take a look at some of the drawings that have come out of Quick Draw. Here we see some broccoli being drawn by many different players. Oceans are depicted in slightly different ways by different players all over the world. It's just a lot of fun to browse the data set. And if you find something that seems out of place, you can fix it right there on the page and make the data better for everyone. In fact, the team has open sourced this data and in a variety of formats. You can learn more at their GitHub page. Uh, there are four formats. First up is the raw files themselves, stored in .ndjson. These files encode the full set of information for each doodle. It contains timing information for every stroke of every picture drawn. And there's also a simplified version stored in the same format, which has some pre-processing applied to help normalize the data. This simplified version is also available as a binary format for more efficient storage and transfer. And it comes with examples of how to read out these binary files using both Python and Node.js. The fourth format is interesting. It takes in the simplified data and renders it as a 28 by 28 grayscale bitmap in numpy.mpy format. You can load it using mp.load. Why 28 by 28 pixels? Well, it's a perfect replacement for any existing code you might have for processing MNIST data. So, if you're looking for something fancier than 10 handwritten digits, you can try processing over 300 different classes of hand-drawn doodles. So, ready to take on that data set and train your own recurrent neural net? Check out the tutorial I've linked in the description down below. And if you want to explore the data some more, you can visualize the quick draw data set using facets. The facets team has taken the liberty of hosting the data online and even given us some presets to play around with. We can load up some random chairs and see how different players drew the chairs from all over the world. We can also see which drawings were recognized as chairs, which ones didn't quite make the cut. There's a number of preset views that are also worth playing around with and serve as great starting points for further exploration and analysis. I have one final idea for what you can do with this data set. I noticed that while there are hexagons and pandas, there aren't any pentagons or koalas in the data set. You can create a new class to extend this data set and train your model to recognize not only the many different classes already present, but also your own custom image class. Whether it's your company logo, school emblem, or something else entirely, make the data set your own. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, please like it and consider subscribing to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. For now, check out the Quick Draw dataset and see what insights you can glean from it.